Hi, I hope you like that intro there. It's the Stranger Things theme tune um, created using nothing but the Uno from IK Multimedia. It's got the drums from um, a Tempest, but all of the sounds are directly taken from the Uno. Um, I'd, I've been playing with the Uno for a little while and, you know, I've seen reviews on it and had a little play with it myself and was trying to compare it, I suppose, to like my Sub-37 and to the Fuse Box and the Mini Moog. Just say, look, smaller synths, just because it's small doesn't mean it sounds small, um, but it's so different to all those. I thought, actually, what I could do is show how you can use a small analog synth to recreate something that's been done with big analog synths. And this is a perfect example of that, where I think if you've seen any YouTube demos of Survivor going through their studio and the studio tour with all the different kit, bits of kit, if you haven't, you should. It's really quite good fun. Um, so they've got loads of this really old analog gear. And I thought, well, actually, can you make something with this brand new 199 euro synth that sounds anything like something that's been done with literally tens of thousands of pounds worth of kit uh, i like doing that sort of thing i like my expensive bits and bobs i like all the big knobs on them but i do remember a time when i didn't have them and you'd spend hours trying to eke the most out of everything you had and it's perfectly possible with something like this so so the theme tune you've just heard was all the uno synth as i say uh, and i'll just go through here and show you what what i've done really i'll add the parts or the the, the patches I'll, I'll add a download for those as well also i should have a quick mention for this website that i used to create that intro so it's this um so Cassell Labs, I think that's how you pronounce it. They've done a Westworld intro creator and a Star Wars intro creator. You can pay them there. Um, I did click download, but it says it's going to take about six months for the uh, for the file to arrive via email. But um, it's really a bit of fun anyway. Definitely worth giving them a mention because that was excellent. Okay, so let's just play a little bit of it again from the start. So this is absolutely covered in Valhalla Shimmer. Um, and if we go through these, if you look at my um, channel strips, you'll notice I've got Valhalla on most of them. It's because effectively I've used only a few sounds, but I've recorded them different, on different occasions. So I should really have used the Valhalla Shimmer as a, as a send, but I haven't because I'm an idiot. Okay, so just looking through these quickly, I've got the Tempest. There's a high op in that intro followed by the main op, which everyone knows. And then we've got sort of, in blue here is a standard sort of, just it's an E minor chord. Then you've got the main bass, and then you've got these sort of choral sounding chords on top. Now the actual sounds I've used don't sound like choral sounds. I'll play them for you in a minute. But I think it's the shimmer reverb that they've they've used to, to create that effect. I don't think they used anything FM or anything wavetable. So they have used standard analog oscillators to do this, I think, from what I understand. So this is probably how they did it. And then there's a few little lead line noises that pop in. And then down in purple here is all the sort of sound effects. So it's really sort of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven parts plus effects. So let's run through them quickly. Kick drum. So that's just an 808 style analog sound from the Tempest. And I've just tuned it to match the Stranger Things tune. So the first little sound that we have here is this intro arpeggiator. I'll just take the effects off it. That's really quiet there. Put the effects back on. You'll see the big difference that shimmer makes. It's beautiful, isn't it? So just a funny little pingy noise, I suppose. And it's doubled up from 16s to 32s. Sounds similar to what you get on the main theme. And now we come into what's quite interesting, which is the fact that there's some chords in this. And what I've used to make the chords, you could just play the note three times. It's, they're all just an E minor chord I've played. Um, I've used this, which is the H9. And I've got minus an octave, plus a fifth, plus a third in a minor key. So if I just play you that, I'll play you um, a note on the Uno. So this is the main arpeggiator sound. And if I just turn this on active, I'll just show you the sounds coming in over here on the UAD Apollo.
So just take that off again. So it's quite an amazing little tool that, but all it's doing is adding four, uh, three extra notes in there, which if you were gonna do this without something like this, obviously they've got this in a um, plugin format as well. Quadravox, it's called their plugin. I'm, I'm sure there's lots of other things that do similar as well, but it does make the chords easier because obviously the Uno is a monosynth. So let's have a listen to this sound on its own. Just a standard PWM chord, as I said earlier. Um, coming back to these choral sounds now. So you can hear that sort of ethereal sound coming from the Valhalla there. I just take that off. And these will sound really lame, I suppose, in comparison. But that's, you know, it's how you build a track. Let's add this one as well. So if we put all that together with the Valhalla, you'll get the idea. I think it's a brilliant, um, brilliant plug in the Valhalla. That's it there. It looks really simple, but the sounds you get out of it are fantastic. And it's... $50, highly recommended. So you put that in the context of the track. You just wouldn't think it was based on such a, such a simple sound as this. Keep on forgetting which one I've got turned on and off. Anyway, the main arpeggio. I've got a little plate on there and I've got a little bit of the shimmer as well. I don't know why I put the shimmer on. I don't know if maybe I could do without it. So I've just used a, two sawtooths to do that one slightly towards the square, but a really, really simple sound. So on top of that, we've got the main bass. I think this is two oscillator again. Two squares by the sound of it with a bit of PWM. And at the end, that comes in um, an octave lower. It's got that nice big thud at the end. And then we've got all these little sort of, I suppose they're like a lead line, really. Should we play these? Take off the Valhalla and the plate on that. That's another simple, all the sounds on this are really quite simple, which I think gives it its sort of 80s feel, its sort of retro feel. Unless you got a modular, the synths you got back then didn't have like huge modulation matrix, like, you know, like you've got the Prophet 8, it's got something like 40 odd modulation destinations. The Prophet 5 didn't. Yeah, so that sound there is just two pulses, quite thin pulses. With a little LFO on the pitch. Put it into the mix. And then I'll just play a few of these effects as well. So one's just a noise. It's sort of, it sounds like a, like a gong or a crash cymbal. In the real tune. So maybe they've used a gong, but I thought, well, I'm, as I'm making everything on the Uno, I'll just do this. Again, very simple. And there's a little pitch bend sound in there as well.
<laughs> you can hardly hear it, but it is in there in the mix. And then there's these weird little stabs, this sort of one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Again, very quiet in the mix, but they are there. And a small, they're thinking that I've used the band pass filter on the Uno for that. And on this, I've used the high pass. So put all that together for this middle section. And there's also a, a little flutter, I've called it here, which is just uh, just little noise stabs, actually. I think I've used a band pass and just swept the band pass up as it comes in. So the band pass, the high pass, and the low pass are all being used on this track. And finally, there's this resonant lead sound. It reminds me of a Juno 2, actually. Rezo Sinrise, it was called on the Juno 2. Beautiful noise. And that's about it. It's really simple, but really nice, really effective. But if you listen to the original, you'll notice it's got some effects in there as well. Now what I've done is I've used the UAD space echo. Because at the end, well, especially at the end, you, you know, there's these sort of sounds that are sort of coming and lingering and a little bit out of tune and stuff and I'm convinced it's some sort of space echo they've used. If you try and produce things exactly the same, so you're trying to produce a sound from a um a 40 year old oscillator on a 40 year old synth going through a 30 or 40 year old effects unit, it's essentially a pathway to madness. So this won't sound identical to the actual real thing, but it uses it's using similar effects. And that's where at the end we get all these sort of it sounds a sort of washed out but tough, if that makes any sense. And I just thought to show you there, I've used quite a lot of automation to tweak like the intensity to the sort of feedback of the loops. That's what this is here on one of the choral stabs. So we go into this Roland here. I think when the original track's been made, they'll have been sitting there tweaking their effects live. I hope you enjoyed that. I enjoyed making it. It was a, it was an interesting Friday night in. I've really enjoyed playing with you. Know it's a bit of an odd synth in that it doesn't match any of the other synths, which sort of I suppose it's got its own niche place there. But it, you can get really tough sounds out of it and really mellow, lush sounds. So definitely worth taking a look. <laughs> <laughs>